All right, everybody, ready to hand out some hardware? And that's it, folks. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next year. Uh, first of all, uh, I jumped over Greg Cullen, the airport manager who's here tonight. Let him have a few words, and then we'll get the party started. Come on up, Greg. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say just a couple things in that uh, about 13 months ago, when uh, we started planning this thing to come to Janesville, and uh, Taylor said, well, we're going we're gonna to have about nine or 10,000 operations, and we're going to put uh, about 100 planes on your ramp, and we're going to put people right out on the edge of the runway. <laughs> I thought, are you crazy? <laughs> the hair on the back of my neck as an airport manager just went up. I'm like, we're not going to put people in the movement area and all that sort of stuff. But I am here to tell you, it all happened. And uh, as of last count, at uh, last night, our tower was a little over 12,000 operations since May 3rd, when the first team started to arrive. Uh, I can tell you that we average normally, I heard Luke earlier say we were sleepy hollow, uh, that's a true statement. Uh, we average about 95 to 100 ops a day. We had at least two 1,500 ops. We had two 1,400 ops in one day. And then, and then some others. And I'm sure we would have increased those had we had a little bit better weather during practice week. But I know the tower isn't here, but I can tell you, folks, there's five people that work in that tower. They rotate, and that's it. Midwest ATC is who owns them. Earl up there, they tried to get more people. They knew it was coming, but they did a superior job, in my opinion. And again, I know they're not here, but please give them a round of applause. <laughs> They, uh, they kept everybody safe, and uh, you know I think in a, my, my second point was the, uh, the fuels team. So that Friday night, May 3rd, I got a phone call, I uh, panicked. So you gotta imagine, my fuels guys are kinda like uh, Barney Fife, if you remember that show. They kinda sit around and once in a while they fuel up a plane and here and there, and all of a sudden, you know, these folks are uh, coming in and they didn't know what the heck was hit, going, hitting them. But uh, after it took them a couple days, but then that small team did a, an outstanding job keeping up with the demand. So I just wanted to give some shout out to them. Last, yes. <laughs> Last thing I want to say is I want to give a shout out to all the students here. Um, from my little small window as I was looking out and the people I got to interact with on the last week and a half, uh, I was impressed, you're professional, you're respectful, and you're safe. And as an airport director, like I mentioned starting off, I, I had some concerns, but you guys are outstanding at what you do, and I give the coaches a lot of credit and this program a lot of credit. Thank you for choosing Janesville. I hope you come back one day. I have some ideas to improve things, and uh, I would love to have you back, so thanks for all your support, Pew. So. Tonight's banquet is uh, sponsored by Republic Airlines. With us tonight is Patrick Holyfield. Uh, Patrick's a 13-year captain with Republic. He's the uh, chairman of the safety uh, board. He is the VP of the Pilots Union, an instruction evaluator, and uh, with over 8,000 hours. Give it up for Patrick Holyfield. Well, good evening. Uh, I want to first of all start with uh, commending all of you for being in this room. Uh, I'm going to give you 10 to 15 minutes of my perspective, 15 years in the airline business, four different uh, airplanes in the 121 world. I see several uh, airline pilot uniforms from Delta, Mesa, Envoy, Southwest. Um, so tribute to those guys for taking their weekend off and representing the airline industry in a, in a very well fashion. You being in this room is something that you should take into your profession for your entire career. You know, people want to come into the airline industry, want to come into a cockpit, want to come to aviation. 
you know, the, the, the pay scales are different now, the work rules are better, but at the end of the day, it's about how you approach the job itself. It's what you bring to the cockpit because the people that trust you literally with their lives as they board that aircraft depend on you to make the difference. It's a machine, it's fallible, humans are fallible, we see accidents, we review accidents and incidents. Unfortunately, we have two recent accidents um, in the airline airspace that we can all examine from our own perspectives. But at the end of the day, the buck stops up front. And you have to be ready for everything that can come your way because it could come when you're least expecting it or when you're most expecting it, but it does not care. So with that heavy intro, let's get into a couple of uh, lighthearted things. Uh, like uh, Terry said, or Taylor said, sorry. I'm from Mississippi, live in Kentucky, so my education is a little bit lower than what most of you just <laughs> I have shoes on, though, so that's a good start. <laughs> I'm Patrick, 13-year uh, captain on that beautiful machine right there. We have 190 of them, 1,000 flights a day. We're the only regional in the world that has an overwater exemption, 162 miles off the coast. We can go with uh, just life vests. So we go all the way to Barranquilla, Colombia. I was in Havana, Cuba, doing a New York to Havana route on Monday. Um, some interesting things in the regional space. It's not regional. It's not time zone dependent. It's, it's literally hemisphere dependent. It's pretty cool. Uh, so we'll walk through a couple of interesting things. I was on your Instagram page this week watching that competition, and I got to say, I was impressed. Uh, mostly impressed by your commitment and your interest in things to compete on that I didn't even know was a competitive forum. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, was anybody in this picture right here, was this a navigation competition or E6B or something like that? Does anybody recognize that photo? What was it? SCAN. I know that's an acronym, but I don't know what it means. So, okay. uh, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> we like acronyms as pilots, but uh, not all of us know. The next one I saw was this. Anybody know this picture? What was, what was going on in this scene? E6B. Woo! E6B. Thank God for eight cars. <laughs> yeah, we push an airplane off the gate. We don't know if we can actually take off until after we push back. We'll find out together. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so bring that E6B tech to the cockpit. And then there's this. Was a CFI competition? Is that what that's going on? It's pretty impressive. It's a two-on-one, I'm assuming. Is the instructor on the right? No. The instructors are on the left, competing? OK. Instructors on the right. OK. Very interesting. Is that you in that picture? Yeah. You look great. That's pretty great. <laughs> so very interesting thing. The most interesting one that I saw was this fella. What is going on here? <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I, it, the motion of the T-Rex the was impressive with the short arms marshaling it. You know. <laughs> Pretty impressive. You know, we, we taxi airplanes in now without a human there. We taxi in an automated parking system, and it looks for objects in the area, and it tells you to stop and how many feet you have left. It's pretty uh, unnerving when you're taxiing a multi-million dollar asset around without a human watching your wings a little bit. So it's a little different. So if I had T-Rexes every time I parked, I would have not have any worries whatsoever. Pretty cool. So kudos to you. It's a very... A uh, big honor for myself to be talking to you for 10 minutes. I know everybody wants the hardware to my left, uh, but you have to get through me first. So just give me about eight more minutes and we'll get to the, the big daddy, the big show. So draw a house, right? Everybody, when you grew up, you know your mom, your dad um, had you draw a house, right? A frame, two windows, a door in the middle, maybe a tree and a bush. Uh, before I get to this, though, er, there's parents in the room, right? There's parents throughout. That's one thing we all have in common. We have parents, right? At some point in our lives, we had parents. So uh, Mother's Day was last week, and Father's Day is next month. So we wouldn't be here without them. So uh, taking off that financial burden that parents provide or the emotional support or the moral support, I'd like to give the parents a round of applause, including my own, that are watching on Facebook Live. Right now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So people say draw a house, and you draw something like this, right? Who cares, right? That's what's in your head. That's where the airline industry is. That's where aviation is. You know, you point A to point B. You have an SOP. You have an FOM. You have a FAR aim. You have the Bible, the written word that is how you fly an aircraft. But what happens when things go awry? You have to think outside the box. You have to bring something that breaks the status quo. It says, that's not my house. That's my house. Who can name that house, right? <laughs> Simpsons? Come on. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you, John. Who, what, what house is that? Family Guy, Peter Griffin, right? 
Still a house, right? So what's the, the whole concept of a house? Security, shelter, providing support, right? It's the airline industry. They're going to build a house for you. The aviation industry, cargo, airline, passenger, car, does not matter. All start with a house. But is that good enough? Or we could go better. We could have something outside of status quo. And this room, this competition, these flight teams are built on breaking the status quo. Everybody can. I truly believe that anybody can move a machine from point A to point B, but it takes a true art, it takes a true aviator to make that difference. And that's where you are right now as a competitive flight team. You could go to a flight program at any uh, flight school or any collegiate program, and you're a pilot. Congratulations. But you didn't say that was enough. You said, that's not enough for me. I want to be better than that. And here you are sitting in this room tonight. So kudos to you for, for that. All right. So this is, uh, I don't know if anybody can recognize this. Tomorrow night is Game of Thrones finals episode. Moment of silence for that if you watch that show. Uh, but this was several seasons back. And I'm a big fan. And as a safety chair, that word is key in my ear. So this is a, a short thing that for some weird reason set in my head, and I've never forgotten it. And it's actually on my uh, right on wife off board in my, in my office, in my crew. I have 28 pilots that work with me, some of the best in the business. Um, we stick our neck out, break status quo every single week. Um, so this is a short little intro. Hopefully the audio will play. I'm a pilot, not a tech guy, so we'll see if it works. What do you give you any trouble? Well, here I am, arming Lannisters, and I never get a second look. But you were right. Safest place for me was right under the Queen's nose. Don't be so sure. Safety is never a permanent state of affairs. Bad things are coming. Bad things are coming. It's ominous, right? I'll give you a perfect example. I flew New York to Havana on Monday. Um, the entire panhandle of Florida was entrapped in thunderstorms, and so was the central part of Florida. I don't know if anybody was flying on Monday, but it was a hoot. Um, so I fly, I'm flying an aircraft that had a 50 nautical mile restriction off uh, shoreline, not one of the ones that we can do uh, 162. So there's a restriction there. Thunderstorms are moving from south of Panama City to east of Jacksonville, and I can go only 50 miles offshore. So I'm in a conundrum as a captain. Uh, then the radio starts sounding off. Severe turbulence, severe turbulence. Are there injuries on board? Are there injuries on board? Extreme turbulence. Anybody can give me the definition of extreme turbulence? It's the standard definition. Injuries on board? Spilled your coffee? Yeah. I say, how about no? That's my definition. We won't go there for sure. Extreme turbulence, the structural integrity of the aircraft is in question. Something you never want to be in. And there was two of them on the radio. So I had a decision to make as a captain. I have a multi-million dollar asset, four crew members, 80 people. Uh, so I had to make a decision. Do I comply with the 50 nautical mile restriction and go inside of severe turbulence or possibly extreme turbulence and hurt my airplane or my people? Or do I go outside of 50 nautical miles? It's my decision, right? It's not something you can be taught in a flight program. Unfortunately, it's all experience-based. So, of course, we went off the coast. We went off east. And that's why the emergency discretion of a pilot in command is there for you to make the right decision for the right reasons. Not for, am I going to get in trouble, but you're aloft. Nobody can make the decision but you and your crew members. And that's what you have to do. But that's why safety reporting programs are there and everything like that. So. Those things are coming, and you can't be trained for all of them, but you just have to know how to operate in those environments appropriately. Uh, this is my only uh, bloviating slide. I want you to show, I want to show where Republic and my pilots are in the industry right now. This is just a small sample of uh, who we've been working with for our safety programs. Keep in mind, we run FOCUA, ASAP, LOSA, Fatigue, and Go Team, 28 pilots out of 2,500, so it's a very small cross section. But Air Wisconsin visited us, Envoy, Horizon, Spirit, Alpha. We go to Alpha several times a year, uh, air, air safety forums and things like that. That was a fatigue seminar. Uh, Delta. And then we went to Brussels uh, two years ago to speak for the European Cockpit Association. So little old Republic and little old regional 121 pilots, uh, we don't care for status quo. And neither should you, and that's why you're in this room. And we've done a few other uh, opportunity projects. So this is out of the Internal Evaluation Program, Advisory Circular. Um, this is something that we believe uh, could be modified a little bit as pilots. It says when they're discovered by the certificate holder, but I want to scratch that and say when they're discovered by the labor group or by the pilots themselves. You know, it shouldn't take the boss to fix deficiencies. 
you're the ones that are strapped in the airplane. Your flight teams may have found deficiencies in the program procedures that you came upon when you became a flight student. Why is that okay? It's not okay. You gotta fix those things, right? And it's up to you and the people that come behind you to fix those things. Here's my last uh, couple of slides. Uh, this is something off of one of my friend's LinkedIn slide, uh, LinkedIn pages. It's really good. You can read it. I'll read it with you. There are two sides of safety, the technical side that helps us assess risk, identify hazards, and controls. But it's the art of safety that allows us to influence change, improve the safety culture, and ultimately be seen as business leaders. And that's where you can make a difference. And you've already made a difference in your life by being a, a NIFA competitor and in being a, co a college-educated pilot. But that's not enough. Don't stop here. Keep going. Keep striving for more. When you strap into an airline aircraft or a corporate aircraft, don't stop. Keep going. Contentment should not be your friend. It should be your enemy. I love, I love uh, being around people that never strive for status quo. Last video. Uh, I'm probably aging myself a little bit over this one. I hear some laughter already. I'm already excited. So outside the box thinking. That's where we uh, define our success. Don't think inside the box. Comply with the SOP of the aircraft and the, and the airline and the company you fly for. But let's get things better. And the way we get things better is a little bit outside the box thinking. When we asked Reebok to send us Terry Tate, some people thought we were crazy. But I'm a firm believer in paradigm breaking, outside the box thinking. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that was over 15 minutes ago, Mitch! And since Terry's been with us, our productivity has gone up 46%. <laughs> We're getting more from our employees than ever before. You know you need a cover sheet on your TPS reports, Richard! That ain't new, baby! Hey, Terry. Hey, Janice! <laughs> What's really impressed me is how Terry's become part of the Felcher family. He fits right in here. That's a long distance call, Doug! To be honest, I wish Reebok sent us 10 Terry Tates. All right, last slide, I promise. So there's a couple of things, like I said earlier, always do the right thing for the right reasons. We went offshore for the right reason. Not necessarily the right thing according to the book, but that's why they entrusted us, and that's why we strap up front to make sure everybody's safe and the asset is safe. And the last thing I'll say is remind yourself, especially in aviation, this is more of a military moniker, but slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Our QRC, our quick reference card, the first thing at the top of the page says, do not rush. Engines on fire, it doesn't matter. Nothing happens good if you rush, especially in an aircraft when you're going 600 miles an hour, seven miles above the earth. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Nothing is worth rushing. So that's all I got. Thank you for your time and your attention. Good luck tonight with the awards. Hardware time. Everybody ready? John's ready. What about Andrew Ross? Let's give a round of applause for our chief judge, Andrew Ross, and bring him up here. Well, thank you. Well, here we are. Yeah? We've had a pretty good week, I'd say. How about you guys? What you feel? You feeling good? All right. All right. I know you're probably thinking this is a little too uh, early to, to be clapping and feeling that, but uh, I'm really excited to uh, be standing in front of you tonight. Uh, real quick shout uh, back out to Patrick Holyfield. Thank you very much. Those were awesome words. Uh, and uh, you took the very first thank you I had, and you made it better. So I hope I'll do it justice. Uh, first, my, again, really quick uh, round of applause for Patrick. So uh, for those of you live streaming at home or for those of you in the room who I haven't had a chance to introduce myself to personally, my name is Andrew Ross. I had the honor of being the chief judge this week uh, for the uh, 99th year of collegiate aviation here in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. Well, down in Janesville, Wisconsin. Uh, I want to thank you as well for your support 
Uh, you're my first thank you of the night, and I also felt like it's one of the most important ones to thank. We don't come into this world believing we can do anything, knowing anything. It's up to you to tell us it's okay to do something. It's okay to go out and try to achieve a dream. So without that very first acknowledgement that you can go after something, you're never going to make it to this room. So a very uh, another round of applause, I would, should say, to uh, the parents, loved ones, of watching at home and here in this room. Thank you. As I was sitting around today and I had a moment to contemplate what I might say here in my last official capacity as your chief judge, I was struck by a couple of things. One was the journey that it took personally for me to get here. And I was struck by something that I was told recently, and that is that we rarely ever celebrate the actual achievement. We do tonight, but that's going to fade. The, the achievement you make here, that initial excitement, winning an event, placing in an event, your team winning, whatever, that, that's going to be great. That's going to be phenomenal. You're going to hold that. But one constant thing I always feel from NIFA, whenever I'm flying with somebody or I'm just interacting with somebody out in the industry, and I, they ask me, what is NIFA? I give them the regular definition of what NIFA is, my standard litmus. But as soon as somebody knows what NIFA is, oh, then ever they just gush about it to say, I learned so much. I did this, I did this, I did this. They never ever tell me what they placed. We celebrate the journey in this, in this country. We truly value that. We celebrate that, and we truly, and that is what we look back on and remember more than anything. We remember our teammates, we remember our coaches, and we remember what it took to get to where we are. And on that note, Knife has also taken a journey, right? 99 years. I opened with that in our opening ceremonies. I said this is our 99th year of collegiate aviation. Not just Knife, but collegiate aviation. And I think that's a really important distinction to make. You're sitting in a room, not this room, but a metaphorical room, certainly, that had some very, very impressive people in it, including this room right now. NIFA and collegiate aviation, this specific task that we're here to do, has been producing industry leaders for 99 years. And I'm looking out on that next group. Sure, you can spot land. Sure, you can navigate. Yes, you can identify an aircraft in three seconds. But you're learning leadership. You're learning teamwork. You're learning communication. You're learning safety decisions. You're learning a lot more than just those events. That's what's made this organization so critical and why the sponsors here and why the judges keep coming back to give back because what we do is extremely important. And just you being here is creating that next group, that next future leadership in this industry. And after watching you all this week, I can confidently say that there are leaders in this room. And I can't wait to see what you guys do next. So on that note, hardware time, as Taylor would say. First, we're going to start with a simulated comprehensive aircraft navigation event, SCAN. Sponsored by the National Association of Flight Instructors, this will be presented by Captain David Edmonds, NIFA event judge of SCAN. While David's making his way up here, a few rules, or a few, well, I guess, little tidbits about how this will go down. Try to hold applause until all the 20, the top 20 folks have been announced. It's going to be difficult, I know. I'll forgive you. But try your best, and it'll help to speed along. 20 through 6, please stand in your places to be recognized. And then 5 through 1 will come up. Uh, grab the award from the uh, gentleman that will be handing out the awards off to my left. And line up as best you can over here. Of course, we're going to have some events that have more than 5. And we'll work with it. I trust you'll be able to make those decisions when you get up here. Uh, and then when, we, when you exit the room for the pictures, please exit off to the left in front of where the awards are. That green shirt works perfect for my explanation. Here's waving off to that side, down to the left, out that back left exit. And then we'll go take the picture and we'll move on. Cool? All right, here we go. Oh, and this goes without saying, I am sorry for how I pronounce your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll do my best, I promise. In 20th place, from the University of North Dakota, Ryan Fitzgerald. 
In 19th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Kevin Peace. In 18th place, from Metropolitan State University of Denver, Samuel Samberson. In 17th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Dylan Hoffman. In 16th place, from Lewis University, Lucas Mickelson. In 15th place, from the University of North Dakota, Garrett Turco. In 14th place, from Kansas State University Polytechnic, Caleb Stroud. In 13th place, from the University of North Dakota, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin McGowan. In 12th place, from Letourneau University Longview, Benjamin White. In 11th place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Jason Brenholt. In 10th place, from the University of North Dakota, Joseph Sorrento, sorry, Sorrentino. Oh, well, that was the first one, that wasn't that hard. Ninth place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Matthew Robbins. In eighth place, from Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. In seventh place, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Zell. In sixth place, from Letourneau University, Joshua Kelly. In fifth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, and remember, come on up here, off to the left, Benjamin Lammer. In fourth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Joshua Weiss. In third place, from Letourneau University, Thomas Alley. In second place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Ryan O'Connor. And in first place, with a total score of 33 in one hour and four minutes, from the University of North Dakota, Benjamin Item. One more round of applause for him. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have the Certified Flight Instructor event, sponsored by the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. This will be presented by Carla Espinisa oh, and Virginia Harmer, who are the event judges. This was really interesting this year. We threw everybody a twist. We not only gave them a scenario, but when they walked in the room, we gave them another scenario to add to it. Uh, what we wanted to point out this time over everything else was adaptability. That's the one thing that pilots need to be able to do. And I think our speaker this uh, evening hit on it. Nothing stays the same. Nothing is constant, everything changes, and you have to be adaptable to whatever is thrown at you, to you, by you. And uh, that's what we want you to take away this time. We did a letter up, it will be put on the website. Um, we did not have time to get it printed up to put in your envelopes, but hopefully you'll read it and take it to heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. In third place, from Metropolitan State University, Denver, I guess I should preface that we're only gonna do top three in this, Samuel Samperson. And go ahead and come up for this. 
In second place, from Jacksonville University, Rachel Chaput. And in first place, from Oklahoma State University, Heather Atkinson. Congratulations and thank you. For the next event, we have aircraft pre-flight inspection. This is sponsored by Mesa Airlines and uh, presented by Captain Marcin Kolacek and Captain uh, Tony Katiko. Hi. Sorry, guys. I was even briefed. Oh, and Kristen uh, Chadwell. I'm sorry, I forgot there was another one. No? Okay. In 20th place, from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Daniel Burns. In 19th place, from Letourneau University, Jonathan Ruip. In 18th place, from Kent State University, William Kaib. In 17th place, from the University of Nebraska Omaha, Tate Beller. In 16th place, from the Metropolitan State University of Denver, Samuel Samberson. In 15th place, from Embry Riddle, Pres Embry Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Colin Kennedy. In 14th place, from Western Michigan University, Justin T. Garden. In 13th place, from the Ohio State University, Hoi Yang Wang. In 12th place, from Minnesota State University, Mankato, Matthew Cade. In 11th place, from Lewis University, William Kratz. In 10th place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Carter Thorne. In 9th place, from Rembrandt Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Anthony Platt. In eighth place, from The Ohio State University, Jack Laurie. In seventh place, from Letourneau University, Noah Bronner. In sixth place, from Western Michigan University, Austin Barrett. And again, one through five, and make your way forward. In fifth place, from Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. In fourth place, from Lewis University, Noah Ambrosek. In third place, from Southern Illinois University, Trent Metternock. In second place, the University of North Dakota, Garrett Turco. And in first place, a total score of 74 with 14 minutes and 51 seconds for time elapsed from the University of North Dakota, Stephen Roach. Thank you all. For the next event, we have the Coach of the Year Award. This is sponsored by Talon Systems. And today it's going to be presented by the NIFA Director of Corporate Relations, Captain John Hager. Before we, be, uh, before we get to the winner of the uh, Coach of the Year Award, I have a statement from the event judge they would like me to read. Tonight, we're honored to present the 2019 Coach of the Year Award. This award is based on the leadership, inspiration, and support of the flight team. In addition, professionalism, organization, instructional skills, and history of SAFECON excellence are taken into consideration. A quote included by the nom in the nomination reads, believe passionately in what you do 
and never knowingly compromise your standards and values. This, reflective is, this is reflective of your 2019 SafeCon Coach of the Year and personal fellow colleague of mine, Louis Liang from the University of North Dakota. Well deserved, thank you. All right, I'm gonna sprinkle these in uh, a little bit more as we go on, but uh, there's a group uh, that has been thanked, but I wanna personally thank again, Janesville Jet Center for, uh, when I asked them initially for two fuel trucks, especially they probably only fuel like, you know, 10 airplanes a day on average, maybe 20 to 30, but I told them I needed two, and that means they may have to rent one. Uh, they, they went, I don't even know where they found it, but they found one and they got it here for you this week, and that was a huge help all week long. So the Janesville Jet Center has been fantastic. Tower has not only uh, asked, uh, or we, not only when we asked Tower to jump, they just said how high and we'll do it, They've been phenomenal. And last but not least, Greg Holland over there, he's been absolutely instrumental and supportive uh, for the entire, from start to finish in this entire event. I can't tell you how, how lucky we are to have worked with these fine people. So please, on behalf of myself and the rest of the NIFA staff, please give them another round of applause. Uh, one of my favorite events, aircraft recognition. This is sponsored by Textron Aviation. And this is gonna be presented by Allison Variano, Manager Fleet Sales and Training. In 20th place, from Western Michigan University, Jack Skoxon. In 19th place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Josiah Burrell. In 18th place from Purdue University, Thomas Sheringham. In 17th place from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Manuel Escobar. In 16th place from Letourneau University, Silas Stanton. I forgive you. United States Air Force Academy, or I'm sorry, in 15th place, see what you did? In 15th place, United States Air Force Academy, Samuel Brennan. 14th place, from Southern Illinois University, University, Nicholas Weber. In 13th place, from the University of North Dakota, Joseph Taylor. In 12th place, from Southern Illinois University, Trent Metternock. In 11th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Patrick McKinley. In 10th place, from the University of North Dakota, Adam DeVille. In 9th place, from the University of North Dakota, Damian Geller. In 8th place, from Western Michigan University, Wendell Curry. In seventh place, from the University of North Dakota, Stephen Roche. In sixth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, John Ritter. And again, fifth through first, come on up. Fifth place, from the University of North Dakota. I'm gonna try, Brandon Corregna. In fourth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Anthony Platt. In third place, also from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Jason Fume. In second place, 
from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Colin Hotsung III. And in first place, the total score of 164 from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Brian Lefetra. Impressive work, thank you. <laughs> the next event we have is the Ground Trainer event. This is sp sponsored by Fresca International. And this is gonna be presented by Captain Kevin DeBossier the knife event judge. In 20th place, from Liberty University, Julia Tyndall. In 19th place, from Auburn University, Alexander Gerbel. In 18th place, from Kent State University, William Cade. 17th place from Bridgewater State University, Matthew Elkins. In 16th place from Kent State University, Joseph Conrad. In 15th place from Lewis University, Anzis Borg. In 14th place from Central Texas College, Josiah Watley. In 13th place, from Purdue University, David Tang. In 12th place, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Azell. In 11th place, from the University of Nebraska Omaha, Brendan Simmons. In 10th place, from Western Michigan University, James Ray. In 9th place, from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona. Tyler Rispoli. In eighth place, from the University of North Dakota, Jason Preston. In seventh place, from Lewis University, Taylor Klein. In sixth place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Matthew Robbins. In fifth place, from Southern Illinois University, Andrew Finer. In fourth place, from, Louis, from Letourneau University, Thomas Alley. In third place, from the Ohio State University, Nolan Hart. In second place, from the Ohio State University, Jonah Deschrockers. I'm gonna say a number, but I don't know if reference until you guys get your packet back is gonna mean anything. But in first place with 12,603 points, the University of North Dakota, Adam DeVille. Thank you all. Fine work. Thank you. <laughs> this will be another good time to interject. Thank you. One of the first people we heard from tonight was Eric Beats and uh, Luke Burlingame. Uh, you know, when I when I was sitting in the room last year uh, when we were in ISU and I was there for the vote, and as soon as the meeting was drawn to a close, I bolted right over to Luke and I said, we're gonna get to know each other really well over the next year. 
so I'm sorry that you're going to know my phone number by heart. Um, and we did. We got to know, I got to know both of them very well, and it's been an honor to work with two people who are very motivated and extremely dedicated to helping out the, knife, the mission of NIFA and what we do here. This event is not possible without a massive amount of thanks to just having the inspiration and having somebody say you can. So I would like to give a very special thank you to Luke and Eric and the whole Wisconsin flight team for that matter. The next event we have is the Computer Accuracy event. This is spon sponsored by Aviation Supplies and Academics Incorporated. You know them as ASA. Presented by James Johnson, Product Specialist. <laughs> In 20th place from the Ohio State University, Matthew Kine. In 19th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Aranola Ojohomna. In 18th place, from Purdue University, David Tang. In 17th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Dakota Buteris. In 16th place, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Azell. In 15th place, from Western Michigan University, James Ray. In 14th place, from Letourneau University, Jonathan Rurup. In 13th place, from the University of North Dakota, Kunal Sujanani. In 12th place, from University of North Dakota, Jason Preston. In 11th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Tyler Rispoli. In 10th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Matthew, <laughs> hang in there, Mass and Gray, Mass and Gray? I appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> Ninth place, from the University of North Dakota, Brian Shamblin. In eighth place, from the University of Nebraska Omaha, Tate Beller. In seventh place, from Southern Illinois University, Andrew Feiner. In sixth place, from Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. In fifth place, also from Southern Illinois University, Colin Heisler. In fourth place, from Letourneau University, James Hulsey. In third place from the United States Air Force Academy, Jeremy Schwartz. In second place from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Colin Kennedy. I got one more. And in first place from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott with 38 and 57 minutes and 58 seconds, Carl Nisirk. Impressive work, everyone. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> the next event we're going to present this evening is the Men's Achievement Award. This is sponsored by Kevin Joel Lairkey. And it's presented by Joel Erke, Captain Joel Erke, and the event judges Carolyn Carp and Diane Bartles. The winners will receive a cash award 
of $700, $500, and $300, respectively. In third place, from Jacksonville University, Samuel Ayala. In second place, from Oklahoma State University, David Koch. And in first place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Matthew Robbins. Thank you both. All right, next up, we have the Ground Events Team Champions, sponsored by, again, by the Aviation Supplies and, and uh, Academics, presented by James Johnson, Product Specialist. I'm guessing he is still outside for the other photo. So now's my stand-up routine. Okay, great. Well, I've got other people I'd like to thank, too, while we're waiting uh, for that to, uh, to occur. The, uh, first, uh, the next person I'd like to uh, thank is actually uh, somebody who I, I, maybe more than Luke and uh, Eric this, uh, this uh, past year I've been in constant communication with, turned into a personal mentor and even better yet, a uh, pr pretty great friend. Uh, and that's Taylor Newman, our executive director. He's uh, tirelessly at work for this entire organization, and his best of intentions have uh, really inspired a lot of people around us to be better and to grow and to evolve the whole organization. So I can't thank Taylor enough for his constant efforts in this. So everybody, please give our executive director a massive round of applause. No doubt, no doubt. And for these, if you would send up a couple team representatives, that would be fantastic. In third place with 152 points from Southern, or Southern Illinois University. In second place with 208 points, the University of North Dakota. And in first place, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott with 213 points. Congratulations to your teams. Great work. Thank you. All right, next up, we have the Regional Top Pilot Award. This is sponsored by the Airline Pilots Association. It's presented by ALPA Education Committee mem member Captain Fred Kopik. The winner from each of the regions will receive a cash award from ALPA of $500. From Region 1, Metropolitan State University of Den Denver, Samuel Samberson. From Region 2, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Ryan O'Connor. <laughs> From Region 3, 
from Region 3, Western Michigan University, James Ray. From Region 4, Letourneau University, Benjamin White. In Region 5, University of North Dakota, Garrett Turco. From Region 6, the University of Nebraska Omaha, Tate Beller. From Region 7, from Rensselaer Polytech Institute, Justin Krasinski. From Region 8, Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Azell. Send somebody up there. <laughs> oh, I know. Poor you. From Region 9, Auburn University, Adam Schaefer. And from Region 10, Liberty University, Stephen Andros. Fine work. Fine work, everyone. Thank you. <clears throat> the next event we have is the navigation event traditional category. This is sponsored by PSA Airlines and it's going to be presented by Captain Karin Henselik and Captain Brandon Moore. In 20th place, from Central Texas College, pilot Josiah Whit Wadley, safety observer Brandon Tippin. In 19th place, from Minnesota State University, Mankato, pilot Allie Draper, safety observer Thomas McGovern. In 18th place, from the United States Naval Academy, pilot Daniel Carroll, safety observer Harley Stone. 17th place, from Central Texas College, pilot Sean Shope, safety observer Scott Peterson. In 16th place, from Minnesota State University, Mankato, pilot Matthew Cade, safety observer Zachary Crow. In 15th place, from the United States Air Force Academy, pilot Jeremy Schwartz, safety observer Alexander Brown. In 14th place, from The Ohio State University, pilot Alexandra Baum, safety observer Lauren Tamilla. In 13th place from Central Texas College, pilot Nathaniel George, safety observer Jeffrey Wilson. In 12th place from Southern Illinois University, pilot Matthew Browning, safety observer Trent Metternock. In 11th place from Southern Illinois University, pilot Angel Cochrane, Co safety observer Warren Woodkey. In 10th place, from the University of Wisconsin, pilot Eric Beats, safety observer Mitchell Glodowski. In 9th place, from United States Air Force Academy, pilot Spencer Thompson, safety observer Colton Priest. In 8th place, from St. Louis University Parks College, pilot Alec Albright, safety observer Corwin Huang. 
In seventh place, from The Ohio State University, pilot Matthew Chine, safety observer Brian Lord. In sixth place, from Letourneau University, pilot Jonathan Rourke, safety observer David Erickson. In fifth place, from Southern Illinois University, pilot Jonathan Azell, safety observer Andrew Feiner. In fourth place, from Letourneau University, pilot Thomas Alley, safety observer Noah Brana. In third place, from United States Air Force Academy, pilot Matthew Robbins, safety observer Jacob Heidinger. In second place, from Letourneau University, pilot Benjamin White, safety observer James Holsey. And in first place, with a score of 74, from the University of North Dakota, pilot Adam DeVille, safety observer Alexis Hess. Great work, everybody. Thank you. All right, the next event we have is the short field landing event. This is sponsored by Delta Airlines. And I'd like to welcome them back to the stage, Captain Fred Kopik. In 20th place, from Kent State University, pilot Tyler, or uh, Tyler Crandall. In 19th place, from Purdue University, Naveen Breen. In 18th place, from Southern Illinois University, Trent Metternock. In 16th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Kevin Peace. In 16th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Ben Klinkman Sinatra. In 15th place, from Purdue University, Jonathan Bubal. In 14th place, from United States Air Force Academy, Alexander Brown. In 13th place, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Nazelle. In 12th place, from Letourneau University, Thomas Alley. In 11th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Tyler Rispoli. In ninth place, from Kansas State University Polytechnic, Caleb Strom. I guess I should pull the paper down a little bit more because also tied in ninth place is from Western Michigan University, James Ray. Should say tied for 10th. In eighth place, from Oklahoma State University, Garrett Fazio. In seventh place, from Letourneau University, Joshua Kelly. And in sixth place, Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. In fifth place, 
from Bridgewater State University, Matthew Elkins. In fourth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Nicholas Carbone. In third place, from The Ohio State University, Jonah Deschrockers. In second place, from Kent State University, William Kibe. And in first place, with a total score of 27, University of North Dakota, Stephen Roche. Awesome job, thank you all. For the next event, we have the IFR Simulator event. So this is sponsored by Fresca International as well. Presented by your event judges and Fresca International phenoms, Jeremy Brown and Jason Goodner, the event judges and Fresca employees. In 20th place, 20th place from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Ryan O'Connor. In 19th place from Kansas State University Polytechnic, Brendan Konigsman. In 18th place from Bridgewater State University, Evan Holstrom. In 17th place from Oklahoma State University, Michael Gasper. In 16th place from Auburn University, Val Atalo. In 15th place from Western Michigan University, Brent Ben. Bean. In 14th place from Colorado Northwestern Community College, Timothy Maroney. In 13th place from the University of Nebraska Omaha, Brendan Simmons. In 12th place from Central Texas College, Nathaniel George. In 11th place from the University of Wisconsin, Eric Beats. In 10th place from the University of North Dakota, Adam DeVille. In ninth place, from Lewis University, William Kratz. In eighth place, from Louisiana Tech University, Tyler DeCote. In seventh place, from The Ohio State University, Alexandra Bond. In sixth place, from the United States Naval Academy, Matthew Royce. And in fifth place, from Metropolitan State University of Denver, Rebecca Carroll. In fourth place, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Azell. In third place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Nicholas Carbone. In second place, the United States Air Force Academy, Matthew Robbins. And in first place, the total score of 90.84 from Laterno University. <laughs> Fine work, thank you.
Next up, we have the Women's Achievement Award. This is sponsored by the 99s and is presented by Carolyn Karp and Diane Bartles, the event judges. The winner of this award received $700, $500, and $300, respectively. In third place, from Auburn University, Madison Haney. In second place, from Jacksonville University, Rachel Caput. In first place, from Oklahoma State University, Heather Atkinson. Great job, great job. For the next event, we have the Message Drop event. This is sponsored by Dynamic Aviation and presented by Heather Pope. In 20th place, from Letourneau University, drop master Silas Stanton, pilot Jeffrey Rosenbaum. In 19th place, from Southern Illinois University, drop master Matthew Browning, pilot Trent Metternock. In 18th place, from Kent State University, Joseph Conrad, drop master Joseph Conrad, pilot Nicholas Malachowski. In 17th place from Western Michigan University, drop master Justin Teagarden, pilot Brent Bean. In 16th place from Purdue University, drop master Sheena Lee, pilot David Tang. In 15th place from University of Nebraska Omaha, drop master Brendan Simmons, pilot Sidney Dew. In 14th place from Auburn University, drop master Seth Swichanowski, pilot Elizabeth White. In 13th place from St. Louis University Parks College, drop master Holly Wilson, pilot Jack Schwartz. In 12th place from the United States Air Force Academy, drop master Colton Priest, pilot Peter Shannon. In 11th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, drop master Benjamin Lammer, pilot Spencer Thomas. In 10th place, from St. Louis University Parks College, drop master Joseph Fiadaka, pilot Jordan Chase Fines. In 9th place, from the University of North Dakota, drop master Adam DeVille, pilot Joseph Sorrentino. In eighth place, from Oklahoma State University, drop master Zachary Lee, pilot David Koch. In seventh place, from the University of North Dakota, drop master Brendan Corrigan, pilot Benjamin Adam. In sixth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, drop master Scott Rutkin, pilot Manuel Escobar. Five, or in fifth place, from Liberty University, drop master Sarah Young, pilot John McFarlane. In fourth place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, drop master Nicholas Carbone, pilot Daniel Burns. In third place, also from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, drop master Jason Bo, pilot Saiful Jahan. In second place, 
from the University of North Dakota, Drop Master Jared Turco, and Pilot Jason Preston. Their score was 38. In first place with 36 feet, six inches, from Southern Illinois University, Andrew, Drop Master Andrew Finer, Pilot Warren Woodkey. Great job, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have the Outstanding Team Member Award. This is sponsored by the NIFA Council. It's going to be presented by the Senior Chief Judge Eric Hess. And this is a really great time to also thank the person who uh, I have also been on the phone with pretty much nearly every day. Uh, Eric, if, for those of you who don't know the role he plays, uh, he is the one who ensures that all the judges get the tools they need to make sure that, they, that we host safe and efficient and quite frankly, in any competition. He's the one who pretty much runs it all from behind the scenes to make sure that we have everything we need. A role that he uh, doesn't like to do out in public, but he's really, really good at. So we thank, I personally want to thank Eric for all he's done for me this last year. From Auburn University, Jonathan Schweider. From Bridgewater State University, Daniel Kelly, and everybody can come up, I should probably tell you that. From Central Texas College, Sang Wuhan. From Colorado Northwestern Community College, Zach Richardson. From Emory Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Tyler Rispoli. And also your new student rep at NIFA Council. From Emory Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, Trevor White. From Jacksonville University, Vito Colella. From Kansas State University Polytechnic, Caleb Strong. From Kent State University, Brian Kamprost. From Laterno University, Celia Stratton. Was that not even close? Sorry, bud. From Lewis University, Daniel Ratz. From Liberty University, Josh Engberg. From Louisiana Tech University, Tyler Swenson. From Metropolitan State University of Denver, Matthew Cape. From Minnesota University, from Minnesota State University, Mankato, Zachary Crow. From The Ohio State University, Jonah Deschrokers, sorry. From Oklahoma State University, Zachary Lee. From St. Louis University, Parks College, Alec Albright.
from Purdue University, David Tang. From San Diego Christian College, Benjamin Latin. All right, thank you all for your hard work. Thank you. be a knife of banquet if I didn't have a technical issue. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Y'all remember your team numbers, right? Well, okay, it's the first two digits of your uh, contestant ID. So in a very unofficial uh, capacity, just so we can get it going, if you know which team member you submitted, coaches, I might need your help with this, or captains, I might need your help with this, I'm going to call team numbers, <laughs> and then you're going to come up and receive the plaque, and we'll fix it in the, uh, in the actual uh, awards. I apologize for this one. So team number 30, once you guys stand up, I might know. You want to send someone up? There. <laughs> All right, I put it together. Here, how about this one? From San Jose State University, Hans Salman? Is that, yeah, okay, there we go. All right, now we're, now we're moving. Let's give him another one. So. <laughs> From Schenectady Community College, Samuel Walner. From Southern Illinois University, Andrew Feiner. From the United States Air Force Academy, Josiah Burl. From the United States Naval Academy, Matthew Royce. From the University of Nebraska Omaha, Ian Kinslow. From the University of North Dakota, Jason Preston. From Western Michigan University, Nicholas Olnhausen. And from the University of Wisconsin, Luke Burlingame. What did I tell you about error cast, making sure it all works in the background? Well deserved, everybody. Thank you. Our next event is the Navigation Event Unlimited category. This is all sponsored by PSA Airlines and it's going to once more be presented by Captain Karen Henselik and Captain Brandon Moore. In 20th place, from Purdue University, pilot Naveen Breen and safety observer Thomas Sherrigan. In 19th place, from Kent State University, pilot Cameron Davis, safety observer Joseph Kulik. 
In 18th place, from Liberty University, pilot John McFarlane, safety observer Morgan Dillard. In 17th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, pilot Tyler Rispoli, safety observer William Schrock. In 16th place, also from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, pilot Nicholas Carbone, safety observer Jacob Petkrap. 15th place, from Auburn University, pilot Justin Locke, safety observer Nate Trott. In 14th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, pilot Colin Hotsung III, safety observer Anthony Platt. In 13th place, from Kent State University, pilot William Cade, safety observer Brendan Abel. In 12th place, from San Diego Christian College, pilot Nathan Kapitudnik, and safety observer Josh Hooker. In 11th place, from The Ohio State University, pilot Jonah Deschrockers, and safety observer Jack Lowry. In 10th place, from Western Michigan University, pilot Lauren Quant, and safety observer Matthew Menard. In ninth place, also from Western Michigan University, pilot James Ray, safety observer Matthew Vanderwall. In eighth place, from Kent State University, pilot Jesse Roos, safety observer Tyler Crandall. In seventh place, from Auburn University, pilot Adam Schaefer, safety observer James Cook. In sixth place, from the University of North Dakota, pilot Joseph Sorrentino, safety observer Ryan Fitzgerald. In fifth place, from the University of Nebraska Omaha, pilot Travis Nelson, safety observer Ian Kinslow. In third place, tied for fourth and third place then, Western, from Western Michigan University, Pilot Brett Bean, safety observer Brandon Jackson. And also in third place from University of Nebraska, Omaha, pilot Tate Beller, safety observer Nicholas Schultz. In second place, from the University of Nebraska, Omaha, pilot Sidney Dew, safety observer Brendan Simmons. And the navigation champions in the unlimited category this year with a total score of 14 points. The University of North Dakota, pilot Garrett Turco, safety observer Jason Preston. Great job, everyone. Great job. We're going to take a moment and invite the senior chief judge, Eric Hess, back up. And while he's on his way, this is a, a uh, he would like to take a moment to opportunity, or he would like to take this opportunity to recognize several of the volunteer judges who have made this event happen this year. And while he gets that microphone set up, I'm going to uh, use this opportunity to also thank the judges. The reason this, uh, this organization and this journey has taken us this far is because there's people willing to guard the integrity of it. And without them, we would 
this event would be worthless and it wouldn't mean anything and it would be lost and we wouldn't have had it around this long. Any judge who is here who guarded that this week, please stand up for us and let us recognize you. Thank you very much. As much as I appreciate all the kind words that had been directed at me, it's not me. It's all, it's everybody. It's one group. It doesn't take one person to run an airline. It doesn't take one person to run any operation. It's everybody. And they were instrumental and key to as much as we got done this week. Eric, I'll give it over to you. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, first of all, uh, Andrew already took the first thing here to recognize the judging staff. But one thing I would like to step aside real quick and mention that today is National Armed Forces Day. This is a day just to recognize everyone currently serving in the armed forces. So if you are serving our country, we'd ask you please stand and be recognized if you are serving or have served in the armed forces. Thank you very much for your service to our country. We greatly appreciate it. As Andrew said, uh, this competition is not possible without the help of many, many volunteer judges whom we just recognized. There are a few judges I'd like to call forward who have uh, been uh, volunteering for a few years. Maybe it's their first safe con, but they've uh, been moving up in the judging ranks. Uh, we have some small awards for them, but first I'd like to invite uh, Dan and Julia Harrington to come forward. Uh, it's the first year I think that I've seen them at Nationals. I know they have not yet received their, uh, their judge pin. Next up on the list, I'd like to invite uh, Zach Schaefer to come forward, please. And uh, Victor Griffin. I think as judges go, he's probably traveled the farthest from, uh, I do believe, France to come judge. Also this year we've had a couple judges who have uh, taken on more supervisory roles and earned their uh, senior judge pin. I'd like to invite uh, Carlos Espinoza to come up as uh, the CFI event judge. Also our uh, ground trainer judge, uh, Kevin DeBosery. I'm going to butcher your last name. Come on up, Kevin. And also, it, uh, it, it took him quite a few years to finally uh, move up the judge ranks. This one was kind of tough to kick around and bring along over the years. But uh, David Edmonds uh, finally has uh, earned a uh, senior judge position in his two-star pin this year. <laughs> Actually, Dave has been a regional chief judge in the past, but uh, he's been complaining to us about not getting his two-star pin, so we figured we should embarrass him just a little bit. Also, uh, certainly last but not least this year, uh, it's been a long time. Andrew's been judging for a long time. He's worked uh, countless hours over the last several months to put this competition on. Uh, I'd like to give a big round of applause and award uh, his four-star national chief judge pin to Andrew Russ. I kind of uh, messed up the script here a little bit because uh, I was supposed to explain what the uh, stars were. Do you want to do that or you want me to do that? Okay. In short, uh, we do have uh, one star judge pins for all of our judges who volunteer at NIFA. Two stars are for our senior judging staff who have chiefed an event. Uh, three stars serving as a regional competition chief judge. And four stars for our national chief judge. Uh, once again, I do want to thank all the volunteers, all the judges this week. Uh, please, one more round of applause for your judges. And thank you for great week. All right, the next event we have is the Crew Resource Management Line-Oriented Flight Training Event. 
This is sponsored by Sky West Airlines, and it's presented by Captain Greg Wiesman, our associate, esteemed associate chief judge this week. And I've got to thank you, but I'll save it for later. He might have to come up a few more times. I won't embarrass him. So the CRM Loft event uh, judges wish for me, since they couldn't be here tonight, wish for me to share something with you. Um, this year's scenario was an urgent medical flight into Juneau. Uh, to, into Juneau, Alaska, surrounded by mountains and marginal weather in a non-radar environment. Specific to that, the top five teams all showed remarkably good CRM skills, which offset minor procedural errors, and the event judge, uh, judges appreciate the preparation taken by all of the contestants in this. So in 20th place, from Central Texas College, pilot flying Nathaniel George, pilot monitoring Jeffrey Wilson. In 19th place, from Western Michigan University, pilot flying Matthew Menard, pilot monitoring Brandon Jackson. In 18th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott, pilot flying Anthony Platt, pilot monitoring Ryan O'Connor. In 17th place, from Kansas State University Polytechnic, pilot flying Caleb Strom, pilot monitoring Zach Kirsten. In 16th place, from St. Louis University Parks College, pilot flying Alec Albright, pilot monitoring Robert McGrath. In 15th place, from Bridgewater State University, pilot flying Evan Holtstrom, pilot monitoring Nicholas Hyland. In 14th place, from Minnesota State University, Mankato, pilot flying Titus Bowles, pilot monitoring Milo Rochester. In 13th place from the Uni University of Nebraska Omaha, pilot flying Ian Kinslow, pilot monitoring Travis Nelson. In 12th place from Metropolitan State University of Denver, pilot flying Samuel Samberson, pilot monitoring Valerie Bloom. In 11th place from Oklahoma State University, pilot flying Zachary Alstead, pilot monitoring Garrett Fazio. In 10th place, from, the, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, pilot flying Tyler Rispoli, pilot monitoring Nicholas Carbone. In ninth place, from Jacksonville University, pilot flying, pilot flying Vito Colella, pilot monitoring Samuel Ayala. In eighth place, from The Ohio State University, pilot flying Jonah DeShrockers, pilot monitoring Alexandra Baum. In seventh place, from the University of Wisconsin, pilot flying Max Behrens, pilot monitoring Eric Beats. In sixth place, from Southern Illinois University, pilot flying Warren Woodkey, pilot monitoring Jonathan Nizel. In fifth place, from Liberty University, pilot flying Carl Bauman, pilot monitoring Morgan Dillard. In fourth place, from Letourneau University, Pilot flying Jonathan Rourke, pilot monitoring Thomas Alley. Tied for second from the University of North Dakota, pilot flying Jason Preston, pilot monitoring Garrett Turco. Again, also in second from, uni from the United States Air Force Academy, pilot flying Spencer Thompson, pilot monitoring Matthew Robbins. Well, the CRM skills may have ended in the event. <laughs> and in first place, from Purdue University, pilot flying Thomas Sheringham, pilot monitoring David Tang.
Phenomenal job. Thank you. It's your time. <laughs> the next award we have is the American Airlines Safety Award, sponsored by American Airlines, and it's presented by American Airlines Captain Jeff Satterwhite. Third place is Liberty University. Second place, Auburn University. And the winner of the American Airlines Safety Award, Kent State University. Congratulations to you and your schools. Job well done. <laughs> Next up, we have the Loaning Trophy, and this is sponsored by the NIFA Council, presented by Bob Clement. Anybody been here that this would be their 50th banquet? Anybody? Raise your hand. All right. <laughs> I got seniority. It's hard to know where you're going if you don't know where you came from. I probably don't need this microphone since I was in the Navy. Uh, what is the loaning trophy? Grover Loaning went to Columbia University and was there. He cut class one day and had a letter of introduction to go down and meet Wilbur Wright, who was going to fly against Glenn Curtis that day, and the Wright brothers kicked Curtis's uh, wings, ailerons away. Uh, at that point, within the next year, Grover graduated and had the first degree, a master's in aviation, and went on to work for the Wright brothers, uh, especially after Wilbur died, he began to work very closely with Orville and challenge it. You got it? It's heavy. The cup that you see here today was first awarded in 1929. So we're at the 90th anniversary of that trophy right there. Commissioned by Tiffany's and a $25,000 check went with it. About $370,000 today. I don't have that much money, I'm sorry. But that represented not the top flight team, but the top aviation program in the nation. It went to Harvard University. And the two criteria for winning it, the most people that flew, pilots and student pilots, and the most hours that they had on their airplane. Surprisingly, Harvard won it the next year, considering they crashed every airplane that he had during that year before they won it again. Grover knew, and I'll read to you for a second, the purpose of the award was to encourage flying among college students to meet the, the needs of the aeroplane industry. That's never been more true in 1929 than it is in 2019. We're facing the largest shortage across the industry, not only pilots, but every aspect of this industry is going to continue to grow, and you're the ones that are going to make it happen. The uh, award itself, I'm afraid I have to apologize. Uh, this is also my 50th year involved with the Loaning Trophy. I was a freshman at Parks College, and I had the privilege, along with my other judge, Captain Chuck Nash, 
He'll be on Fox around 11 o'clock tomorrow as a talking head. And uh, Tom Frasca, Frasca International, to uh, judge this year's contestants. Uh, like I said, this will be my 50th year, but that first year at Parks, I got to be the chauffeur for Grover Loney. And Chuck and I spent three days with Grover, and he would sit with the students in the hangar, and he could sit there and ask them, so tell us about Orville, tell us about Wilbur. And he'd tell you everything that he, he knew and all the inside things that were going on on the time in aviation. But most importantly, he would emphasize to us that we were the future of aviation. That year, and I'm going to be a little long-winded, he gave a speech to the Wings Club in New York. And I read that speech and I thought, this guy's smoking some good stuff. <laughs> Not that I did at the time. But uh, Grover, in that, he writes in the book that by the turn of the century, we'll be flying airplanes. You'll get on your radio telephone telegraph, and you'll be able to print your ticket at home. You'll select your seat. There'll be an entertainment at your seat. There'll be a place for your cigarettes or your pipe. But perhaps by then, we'll be smart enough not to smoke on aircraft. And the pilots will be flying the airplane looking at TV screens. That's in 1968. That all came true. But Grover saw even more than that. And the judges he selected in 1929 had a bit of history. Of course, there was Grover Loning. Commander John Towers, the US Navy, first person to cross the Atlantic, only he did it in an amphibious boat, an airplane, stopping for fuel in the ocean from Navy ships, pre-positioned. Their good friend, a young lady named Amelia Earhart, and of course, Chuck, his buddy Charles Lindbergh. So when you go up, and if you get a chance tonight, touch this trophy, because this was handed out April 16th, 1929, and those four people held on to this very cup at that point. And it is more so today as we look at the schools coming forward of the innovation to meet the needs of the industry. Without breaking anybody's bubble here, the reason you go to college, I hope, is to get a job. We're going back to three-year bachelor programs, total immersion flight training, expansion of the 141 programs to include restricted ATPs. We have one university that has 65 141 operations with their online course. And in the last four and a half years since the implementation of the restricted ATP, they have 2,100 online aviators in their degree program and 600 on the campus. We have Ohio State that's just built a brand new complex designed to hold the future of their aviation at 300. They have 350 in the enrollment, and the building which has just opened is having expansion. Kent State the same way, Auburn University the same way. We're ever growing and the opportunities are there for you to take and enjoy a career. As a 20-year career at FedEx right now, uh, the young man that was here, he's 24 and a half years old, just got 1,000 hours three weeks ago. He has an interview at FedEx in two weeks. Second year of pay at FedEx, $180,000 a year. It's about a $14 million career in today's dollars for that job as a pilot with a 30-year career. And the school that was selected this year, very close. I mentioned some of the names. I'm proud to announce the 90th anniversary. The winner is Liberty University. I think you all know how to pick this thing up. So would you bring the team up here and grab this thing for the photo?
Ohio State and the other schools, Kent State, to do the same. I don't think there's a finer way for uh, a family and parents to come to a joint decision than to see uh, what the schools are doing. It's truly amazing. And you should look at them to see what everybody else is up to. Congratulations, folks. Hey, Bob. Next up, we have the Power Off Landing Event. This is sponsored by Piper Aircraft, and it's presented by Jason McDowell, who's your event judge. In 20th place, from Kansas State University Polytechnic, Robert Wiesner. In 19th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Anthony Platt. In 18th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Spencer Thomas. In 17th place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Carter Thorne. In 15th place, from the University of Nebraska Omaha, Tate Beller. In 15th place, from the United States Air Force Academy, Nicholas Hillman. In 14th place, from San Jose State University, Salam Khan. In 13th place, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona, Jason Vo. In 12th place, from Western Michigan University, James Ray. In 11th place, from the University of North Dakota, Jason Preston. In 10th place, from Western Michigan University, Justin Teagarden. In 9th place, from the United States Naval Academy, Brandon Gore. In 8th place, from Minnesota State University, Mankato, Zachary Crow. In 6th place, from Southern Illinois University, Andrew Feiner. And tied, I should say, for 6th place. Also tied for sixth place is United States Air Force Academy, Matthew Robbins. In fifth place, from the University of North Dakota, Joseph Sorrentino. In fourth place, from Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. In third place, from Western Michigan University, Brendan Bean. And we have a tie for first place. 25 each. From Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott, Ryan O'Connor. Yeah. Also in first place, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Azell. Great job, great flying. <laughs> Next up, we have the Cleveland Aviation Progress Award. This is sponsored by Cirrus Aircraft. It's presented by John Rasmus, Director of Fleet Sales and Civil Markets.
And this year's Collegiate Aviation Progress Award goes to Kent State University. Great job, everybody. Thank you. And next up, we have the Top Pilot Award. This is once again sponsored by the Airline Pilots Association. And Fred's getting tired of coming up here. But once more, presented by Apple Education Committee of Metter, Captain Fred Kopik. The winner of the Top Pilot Award and their school each receive a $1,000 check from Alpa. In third place, with a total score for the Top Pilot Award of 92 points to their team the, from the United States Air Force Academy, Matthew Robbins. In second place, with 110 points in flying events for their team, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Izzell. <laughs> who is outside, so we'll continue clapping for him in a little bit. And in first place, with 111 points, from Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. Who's also, well, you, want, you can take the check if you want. No, just, they are, we'll, we'll hand it back to them. They just give another round of applause. Thank you. Yeah, sure. For your Honda. No, actually, they just walked back in the room. I didn't know how long we were waiting. So we'll wait for them to come back up here. Jonathan. Congratulations, gentlemen. Well done. to kill a few more seconds here. Uh, two people that I want to thank. One of them's running off to the wings over there in that bright uh, green shirt looking fabulous today is uh, Phil Weir, your outgoing student rep. Phil's been phenomenal at the job. He's been incredible, and we hope he keeps working. And also phenomenal, incredible is my left, Bill Jones. He's also going to be serving out the rest of his term, as well as Tyler, who will be joining him uh, July 1st. So uh, can we give them a round of applause for <laughs> helping out? Next up, we have the Flying Events Team Champions. This is sponsored by Envoy, and will be presented by First Officer Dalton Thompson. In third place, oh, you want? I promise I'll uh, be brief because I know everyone's excited for the results. But a good airline exists because of its aircraft, destinations, and et cetera. But a great airline exists because of its people. That's why Envoy has been here all week, to recruit the best people to continue going for great. There's certainly a lot of talent in the audience tonight, and it was a pleasure talking with a lot of you as the competition went on. I hope you keep Envoy in your thoughts as you progress in your careers beyond college. Thank you very much, and on to the Flying Events Champions. Thank you, Dalton, and thank you, Envoy. In third place, with 192 points in flying events, 
Western Michigan University. In second place, with 276 points, the University of North Dakota. And in first place, with 278 points, Southern Illinois University. Congratulations, Western UND and Southern. Well done. And for some more fun, whoever Scott Peterson is in the room, after the banquet, the judges might have dinner on you, <laughs> unless you come and get this back. So just come on up here if you, uh, if you lost it after we're done here. And if he's your teammate, I expect jokes. Next up, we have the judges trophy. This is sponsored by the National Air Transportation Association. It's gonna be presented by uh, Ryan Wagesback. Vice President of National Air Transportation Association. In third place, with 3,402 points, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott. In second place, with 3,491 points, the University of North Dakota. And in first place, with 3,632 points, Southern Illinois University. Congratulations to your teams. Well, very well done. The next award is the Competition Safety Award. This is sponsored by the Pilots of FedEx and it's presented by our previous, our previous National Chief Judge and Centurion Captain Steve Halcombe. This year's competition safety award, and it was pretty unanimous between the judges, goes to Central Texas College. That was one of the trophies that got lost in the mail, so we will be finding that for you all shortly. Give a big round of applause for Central Texas.
Next up, we have the top scoring contestant. This is sponsored by UPS. Brought in that big fancy 757 yesterday. Great airplane. Presented by Adam Kick. I just want to thank everybody for inviting us out uh, this year. This is our first year being involved directly in NIFA. Um, we had a great week. Um, everybody in our team really enjoyed meeting all of you. Uh, and uh, uh, on behalf of Captain Ed Faith and Gory Hatcher, who could not be here tonight uh, because there are just too many towers to buzz and not enough time, <laughs> thanks again and congratulations to uh, all the award winners. Uh, in addition to the trophy, we'll be uh, presenting a 767 model to the top scoring contestant. So good luck. Thank you, Adam. And in third place from the United States Air Force Academy with a total of 120.25 points scored for their team, their total is Matthew Robbins. In second place, with 128 points for their team, from Southern Illinois University, Matthew Browning. <laughs> and in first place, with 139.5 points scored for their team, from Southern Illinois University, Jonathan Azell. Amazing work, thank you. Next up, we have the Red Baron Team Sportsmanship Award. This is sponsored by Air Wisconsin, and it's presented by a previous National Chief and Centurion member as well, Nate Schmidt. This year's Red Baron Team Sportsmanship Award goes to Sunny Schenectady Community College. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. Next up, we have the top two, uh, top two year school. This is sponsored by Sporty's Pilot Shop, and it's going to be presented by Jeremy Brown of Fresca International. I'm gonna make it up to y'all because this year's top two year school is Central Texas College. This isn't shameful at all. <laughs> Congratulations. Before we go into the very final trophies we have, there's two more very important uh, groups that I have to thank. 
The first one is uh, being my parents. The first people that actually believed and said I could do whatever I wanted, no matter the cost, and they did not really realize what I was gonna pick, but <laughs> they, uh, they stuck by me all the way, and uh, even up to and including the fact that my father is sitting right here and has uh, come all the way from Ohio to judge this entire week and support me, uh, even though he knew that I'd be at the airport for about 14 hours every single day. So uh, that's who I first would like to thank. And last, but absolutely certainly not the least, is my right hand, the only person who I could ever look at this week. And as soon as I said what I needed to have done, he was already 50 feet away from me getting it done. My associate chief judge this week, Greg Wiesman, <laughs> who's shunning that uh, praise right now and who is uh, going to be your chief judge next year at Oshkosh for our 100th year celebration of collegiate aviation. So thank you, Greg, for being there for me all week and having my back. <laughs> Our final award for this evening. Here it is. You're done listening to me talk. The National, Champion the National Championship Trophy is sponsored by Southwest Airlines and presented by Captain Nick Caulfield, the Midway Chief Pilot for Southwest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first opportunity to be amongst this kind of talent. I mean, this room is amazing. All the judges, all the sponsors, all the aviators that are here, I am absolutely rocked by the talent that's comprised in this room. So I can't thank you enough. I'm hoping that Southwest will continue to take and be a sponsor for this opportunity here because like I say, you guys are our future. There's not much more I can say that hasn't been said. All I can say is, these two gentlemen behind me were instrumental in making sure that our sponsorship happened this year. So to all of you, I congratulate you and thank you. Thank you, Captain Caulfield, and thank you, Steve and Scott, this week. Thank you. In third place, with 308 points, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Prescott. In second place, with 430 points, Southern Illinois University. I did attend that university, I'll have you guys know, just so you know, okay? <laughs> and in first place, for your 2019 national champions, 99th year we're here, or about, with 484.5 points, the University of North Dakota. Congratulations to all teams. Thank you. Congratulations to all teams that are here. Those of you who weren't here through uh, or didn't qualify for nationals, maybe watching at home or have been 
paying attention and practicing uh, all year round to prep for this time next year, uh, you're all just ahead of the game as all the presenters and all of the speeches we've had tonight have shown. Thank you. Uh, my final, I guess my real final thank you is to every single competitor, coach, team here. You made it a safe week, you made it an efficient week, and I thank you all for that. And you should all be proud. I want to give you, I want you guys to give yourselves one final round of applause. Thank you. With the weather this weekend, please be safe going home. Please uh, don't, don't get their itis. I know you've been gone for a while. Please be safe going home. Remember our alcohol policy. And uh, we have our, after, after one, one representative from each team, please come up. We have a packet for you. I look forward to seeing you all in Oshkosh next year. EAA is going to be a lot of fun. I can't think of a better venue for 100 years of aviation excellence that we've been a, uh, a part of here. I can't wait. I hope you can't either. So please be safe. It's been an honor. Good night. Is Matthew Browning still here, the national top pilot? If you can come to the stage, I appreciate it. Thank you.
Yeah. <laughs> 